I recently saw this idea for a coaster set and a matching holder on social media. So I wanted to take a stab at it, and I had this uh, 3 8 inch material of white oak leftover scraps. And I thought, hey, this is a pretty good use of it. I will say if I ever do this uh, again in the, down the road, I'll probably use half inch stock. But I've got that, and then I've got this purple heart. And as you see, it's not a big piece. It's kind of ideal for using as a little bit of an accent. And so I'm just cutting a couple of strips off so I can uh, incorporate that as well. So first I got the white oak, purple heart is next. And then I wanted something that would kind of help make that purple pop a little bit more. A little piece of maple that's gonna go in between the two pieces of purple heart. getting the pieces laid out for the glue up and you can really see that the possibilities are endless. You could make this out of one single species of wood. I may make some in the future just out of solid walnut, um, but you can pick any combination and really utilize all these steps to build your own uh, regardless of what design of color and species you're looking at. Um, but I'm really pleased with how this turned out in the end with this white oak and purple heart, and I'm super glad I put that little maple strip in the middle. While that's in the clamps, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the holder or the stand for the coasters. And this is more just off cuts of white oak. It's three quarter inch material, cutting these into one inch strips. And I will say for the thinner coasters that were only about three eighths of an inch, these were a little chunky. Um, for half inch coasters this might look just fine but what we're going to do is basically cut 45s into these pieces and just know that after you get this you know perfect 90 basically you're making half of a picture frame you are going to cut these pieces to the same dimensions as your coasters so the longest part of, you know from the longest tip to the other side is going to be the same dimensions and in my case it's about four and a quarter inches I'm clamping this because I know this is going to be a dangerous cut, but I learned something right here. <laughs> a little scary kickback. Uh, I knew that was prone to do that. That white oak is pretty thick. Luckily, it just chewed up my off cut. Um, but I figured out because I already put those 45s on there, you cannot really clamp down your piece uh, safely uh, doing it that way. So I'll show you here in just a minute. I wise up. And realize okay I can't that didn't really work so well maybe if I do an angle nope that's worse so if you put it on the flat side uh, it's much safer so I'm gonna do that here didn't have any issues uh, here on out so anyway these pieces are cut same dimensions again longest part of it is the width of one of your coaster sides and then that makes it really proportional to the, the coasters that they're holding You can see I'm in need of some sanding since the, my table saw blade, which needs to be sharpened, burns some of these pieces. Uh, my suggestion is to clamp all these pieces up like this. Uh, instead of sanding each piece individually and potentially changing the shape or dimensions of one of the individual pieces, this keeps them all consistent so that you've got a nice even glue up with pieces that are all identical still. I'm just using wood glue and some painter's tape to keep these clamped together no screws or nails or anything in this base. They're not really supporting much weight uh, and don't need to be super extra sturdy. So this was plenty of clamping pressure. And now we can get the coaster blanks out of the clamps. Just doing a bit of sanding to get some of the glue off uh, just to save my planer blades a little bit so they're not chewing through that, that hard glue. And now we can run those to the thickness planer and get them to their final dimensions, plus clean up any of that glue squeeze out or inconsistencies in some of those pieces. This was fun getting to use my crosscut sled for the first time on an actual project. Uh, not only does it cut perfect 90s, uh, this was neat getting to use my stop block and what I'm going to do here is set those coasters right against the blade so and then put the stop block right at their their width so that way when I turn the coasters 90 degrees I'm going to stack them all up make it in one cut but now as I turn them and place them on the stop block 
I'm going to ensure that those coasters all have exactly perfectly even sides. I'm going to be perfectly square this way, and uh, this worked like a charm. Once again, I got a little bit of burning on the end grain of these coasters. So by clamping them all up together and sanding them all at once, I'm not accidentally sanding off too much on one coaster and this way it keeps them perfectly square. I'm gonna put a very light chamfer on each of these coasters on all the sides. And this is really just a design preference. Uh, you could very well put a round over on these or just you know, hand sand them to break the, the sharp edges. Whenever I do more squarish projects, I feel like a 45 degree chamfer kind of fits the design style. If I'm doing something with more rounded corners, I'll tend to put a round over. Back to the stand or holder, these are gonna be the cross pieces that the coasters actually rest on. And the dimensions of these basically just need to be at least as long as all the coasters are stacked up. And uh, you might also factor in if you're going to do any kind of feet on them. In my case, I'm putting some little bumpers. So basically doing all the math of four coasters plus the little feet on them. Uh, this is a little bit longer than what that total is. And I'm using some wood glue uh, in addition to a little bit of CA glue just kind of to help clamp it together uh, while the wood glue dries. So I'm not having to, again, use any nails or screws. And uh, love the little trick of once, you know, you've got a little bit of glue squeeze out, you cut a plastic drinking straw at an angle, and that makes a great little way to clean up uh, any glue squeeze out. Just applying a bit of water to raise the grain so that way I can sand it down one final time so that when I apply the finish it's not going to pop the grain up. I'm using a spray lacquer for the holder. For one, it's easier to get into the nooks and crannies than trying to brush on a finish. Uh, plus two, it's not going to see nearly as much moisture as the coasters. Here's what I used for the coasters themselves, and I applied four or five coats, hopefully ensuring that these things are going to be, you know, really protected against moisture. Although, I don't know if there's just a bulletproof finish out there for coasters that will last a lifetime. If you know of one, let me know in the comments. I'm using these little bumpers that are really for cabinets and things as feet. That way, just to keep the coasters or the surface they're resting on from getting scratched up. I like them because they're low profile, they're clear, so they don't really take away from the wood grain. They kind of blend in and uh, they're really nice as little feet. So enjoy some beauty shots now. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. I hope to be making a lot more of these small wooden gift idea videos, so subscribe if you want to stay tuned for future projects.